Apriti here from How to Electronics. This tutorial is about Amazon Web Service. So basically we will learn about the AWS IoT Core. The AWS IoT Core is a managed cloud service that connect device easily and securely interact with cloud applications and other device. In this tutorial, we will learn how you can connect the SP32 with AWS IoT Core. For a demo, we will use DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor and read the humidity temperature data. The ESP32 will connect to the local Wi-Fi network and will post the DHT11 sensor data to AWS IoT Cloud. Not only posting data, we can also receive the data from AWS dashboard. This tutorial comprises multiple sections. Signing up and setting the Amazon Web Service, installing necessary libraries to Arduino IDE and writing an Arduino sketch for the project, creating a thing in AWS, creating policy and attaching to thing, generating certificates, modifying Arduino sketch according to thing data and credentials, subscription and publish data to and from AWS dashboard. This tutorial is a tutorial for beginners who want to learn about the Amazon AWS IoT Core for IoT applications. So without getting any delay, let's get started. The PCV board used in this project is sponsored by Next PCV. Next PCV offers totally free PCV prototypes, which means you can get 10 PCVs of 1 to 4 years without any cost. There is no PCV cost or shipping fee. You can upload the Garber file directly and fill in the PCV details like quantity, color, and thickness. Then select your country for shipment and place an order. It's totally for free. And there is an exciting offer for new registers as you can get $100 coupon if you sign up using the link in the description welcome back again the hardware required for this project is an esp32 wi-fi module i'm using a room esp32 board you can use any other version of esp32 board and for the sensor part we will use dht11 humidity and temperature sensor connect the dht11 sensor to esp32 board as per circuit diagram here and you can use a braid for for connection or simply use a male to female connector wire now go to your web browser and search for AWS IoT Core. So basically we need to set up the AWS account now. So create an account using the email ID and password. The account also requires your bank credit card information. There will be no charges but AWS just needs a verification using your bank account. It will also ask for phone number verification. Hence the account will be successfully created. Now let's see the code for this project. We will use a DHT library and retrieve the humidity and temperature data from DHT11 sensor. We will also need Wi-Fi client secure library, publish subscribe client library, and the Arduino JSON library. The link for all these libraries is on our website article. Then we have a separate header file here called as a credits.h. This contains all the credentials and information related to AWS. We will modify this file after setting up the AWS thing. Now go to the AWS console window. Go to service and search for IoT Core. After clicking on IoT Core, AWS IoT dashboard will appear now. On the left side of the dashboard, there will be so many options. But we need to work with two options here. One is the manage option and the other is the secure option. Under manage option, click on things. Now we need to create a thing here. So click on create things here. You can select whether create a single thing or create many things. But in my case, I will select create a single thing. Then click on next. Here we need to specify the thing properties. First give a thing name. You can name it anything. For example, I will name it ESP32 underscore DHT11. Under additional configurations, there is no need to make any changes. Under the device shadow option, select the first option as no shadow. Then click on next. Now you need to configure device certificate. So here you can auto generate new certificate or use your own certificate or upload CSR or skip this. But AWS recommendation is to select the auto generate new certificate. Then click on next. Now we need to attach a policy to the things we created. But no policies are here right now. So we need to create a policy first. So click on create policy. 
Here give any name to the policy. For example, I will give it a name as ESP32 underscore policy. Now, that statement part is very important. Under the action, type IoT. So multiple options will pop up. From here, we will only need publish, subscribe, connect and receive. First, select the IoT connect option. In the resource ARN, replace the last section with the client ID. Give any name to the client ID. For example, ESP32 underscore DHT11. Under effect, select allow. Again add another statement. This time, select IoT publish. In the resource ARN, replace the last section with the topic that you assigned in the code. Here it is assigned as ESP32 slash publish. So I will replace it with the same. Under effect, again select allow. Now add third statement. This time select IoT subscribe. In the resource ARN, replace the last section with a topic that you assigned in the code. Here it is assigned as ESP32 slash subscribe. So I will replace it with the same. Under effect, again select allow. Add fourth statement now. This time select IoT receive. In the resource ARN, replace the last section with a topic similar to the subscription. So I will replace with the same subscription topic. Under effect, again select allow. Now click on create to create the policy. So all the policies have been created successfully. Now go back to creating option. So you can see a policy option appeared here as well. We need to attach the policies to the certificate. So select the policy and click on create thing. Now we need to download all the certificates from here. First download the device certificate and then rename it as a device certificate for identification. Also download the public key and rename it as a public key. Then download the private key and rename it as a private key. In the root CA certificates, we have two certificates here. But we just need root CA1 certificate, so download it as well. So we have downloaded all certificates that we need for our project. Now click on done. So we have successfully created a thing as well as a certificate. Here is a thing named as ESP32 DSD11. To view your certificate, go to the certificate section. And to see the policy, go to the policy section. Now it's time to modify the code. Go to secrets.h tab and let's begin the modification. Here we need to include a thing name. You can go to the thing section and copy the thing name from here and paste the thing name over here. Under the YFSS ID and password, enter the YFSS ID and password. Now we need to insert the AWS IoT endpoint here. To get the endpoint, go to the settings part of AWS dashboard. So here is the device data endpoint. Click here to copy the endpoint and then go back to the Arduino IDE and paste it here. You need to insert the Amazon root CA1 here. So for this, we need to go to back to the certificate that we downloaded earlier. Open this file with Node++ and copy all the text. Then go back to Arduino IDE and insert the copied text between begin certificate and the end certificate. Under these lines, we need to paste the device certificate text. So open the device certificate file that we downloaded earlier and again copy the text and paste it between the begin certificate and end certificate section. Under this part, we need to insert the device private key. So go to the downloaded folder again and open the device private key file using Note++. Again copy the text and paste it here. So modification of the Arduino sketch is done now. Go to the tools now. Select the SP32 board that you are using for this project. Select the COM port. Then click on the upload option to upload the code to SP32 board. Once the code uploading is done, open the serial monitor. The SP32 will try connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Once it get connected to the Wi-Fi network, it will try connecting to the AWS IoT server. You can see now the humidity and temperature value is displayed on the serial monitor. The same things should be posted to the AWS server. To check that, go to the test section of AWS dashboard. Under the test section, we have an option for subscribe and publish. Now to see the data, 
First copy the published topic from the code and paste it here. In the additional configuration, you can make changes if you want, then click on subscribe. When you hit the subscribe button, immediately the data from ESP32 can be seen here. The data is updated here after an interval of every one second. This is really amazing as we are able to receive the data published from ESP32 through MQTT protocol. You can check the data with the data printed on serial monitor. Both of them are the same. This is how we read the subscribed data. Now let's see if we are able to publish the data from AWS IoT Core to ESP32 or not. For this, you need to again change the topic and replace it with the same topic that you kept in the code. Under additional configuration, do nothing. Then click on publish. Immediately you can see the message has been sent to the serial monitor. This is amazing, isn't it? Now let's try by sending something else. So this is my message and I hit the publish button. It sent again. This is how you can send or receive data from AWS IoT Core using ESP32. This is a basic beginner's tutorial for the users who want to get started with Amazon Web Service for their IoT device. I will be making more videos on AWS and will publish them soon. Stay tuned and subscribe to our channel.